Hi, I'm Monaco from Westermo, and I'm here to present a video series about the energy for future generations. In today's video, we're going to talk about where are we going in the energy industry. So, let me start telling you the story uh, based on where are we going in the energy world. And I would like to summarize this story with the concept that many of you are probably familiar of the concept of the three Ds. Everything starts with the global warming. And as we can all notice, the Earth is changing. And then in order to contain that or reduce that, every country in the world got together in the Paris Agreement where they come up with some commitments and some uh, responsibilities in, in an attempt to reduce or contain the, the warming in a limit of two Celsius degrees. Based on that agreement, the main conclusion was that we would need to shift from a fossil-based power generation to renewable-based power generation. Therefore, decarbonizing the grid. So there goes our first D there. Uh, according to IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency, they made a study in 2019 and they concluded that joining the renewable power generation and electrification in the industrial sector, that would alone contribute to 75% of all the changes we need to do in order to achieve the results from the Paris Agreement. Talking about decarbonization and renewable power generate, re generation, that's great. And that actually opens up new possibilities for us. If we compare a uh, giant power plant like hydropower or nuclear power, you have huge plants completely away from the city um, being installed somewhere else. But if you compare to a wind park or solar park, you can actually have much smaller plants. For example, you can have a wind turbine alone in a farm, or you could be having a solar rooftop in your house. So that is great. It decentralizes the power generation. Much smaller, much smaller power plants and much more power plants. That is great, but that comes with an additional challenge. We are decoupling the generation from the consumption. We don't always know when we get the right amount of wind. We don't always know how much sun we're going to get. And on the other side, the consumption is kind of fixed. And in order to make it even harder problem to solve, the consumption profile is also changing. At the same time, we have electric vehicles, you have battery storage units, which is changing the way people are actually using electricity. So everything leads to having more control. You need to know what is going on at the entire power grid at all times. There is only one way to get more control, is by acquiring more information from the grid. Hence, the need of digitalizing the grid. The power companies, they are uh, looking for this as a solution. Having more smarter digital assets throughout the entire value chain in the, in the energy value chain. All the voltage levels coming as close as a residential uh, house, for example, installing smart meters and then having digital information from the secondary substations, from the primary substations, and all the way up to the control centers. This idea um, is bringing more data to, to, the, to the control centers, and that is con also helping them to compensate for the fact that the consumers are becoming prosumers, which means that we are not only consuming electricity anymore, but we are also generating electricity, and that is increasing the complexity. So more data, more digital assets. This sounds great, but again, comes with some challenges. You have more digital assets in the grid, which means that there is a higher risk for cyber threats. And there it goes, comes my C part on this scheme, cybersecurity. There is a need to have an end-to-end -end secure solution from, from one point of the, of the grid all the way up to the control center, all the way up to the cloud, so we can make sure that we have this entire ecosystem working without being disturbed by the hackers. So if I had to summarize the journey that we're taking now, Again, talking about the global warming and the need to change from fossil-based generation to renewable power generation, thus decarbonizing the grid. 
that opens up for possibilities of decentralizing the power generation, having smaller solar and wind plants, which brings new possibilities, but increases the challenge to control everything that's going on in the grid. So consequently, you need to digitalize the entire power grid in order to collect this information uh, and understand exactly where we are throughout the entire value chain. But more digital assets increases the risk for cyber threats, hence the re relevance of cybersecurity in this scheme. So there you go, summarizing really quick where we are, the 3D plus C.